parler développement. Hablando de desarrollo. Talking development. Welcome to Talking Development, a podcast by Concord, the European Confederation for Relief and Development NGOs. These regular podcasts deal with topical issues linked to international cooperation, focusing particularly on the role the EU can play. In this episode, we will speak about the role sustainable and inclusive business models have in achieving sustainable development globally. If you were to think about what makes a business successful today, what comes to your mind? Profit? Sure. But what else? Have you ever thought about the role sustainability and inclusivity can play in the management of a business? Well, two million enterprises in Europe and many more around the world have done so already. That's why they're called social economy enterprises. And they operate on the back of a sustainable and inclusive business model. I know. That was already quite some technical jargon, wasn't it? So let's focus on the term for just a second. What is a sustainable and inclusive business? As the name will suggest, it is still a business. But unlike conventional businesses, its goal is not to maximize profit. Rather, sustainable and inclusive businesses aim to achieve well-being for all while respecting the limits of our planet. Let's say that sustainable and inclusive businesses have three main characteristics. They have a long-term vision, they are driven by a social and environmental mission, and they are governed in an inclusive manner, meaning that employees, producer and consumer also have a say over important company decisions. They can come in various shapes, cooperatives, social enterprises, certified fair trade or B corporations, to name but a few. To give you a rough number, Today, some 279.4 million people are involved in a cooperative. If you think about it, that is quite a number. But some of you might wonder, why should I, as a consumer, care about this? Well, the fact is that in a world where inequality are rising, we all have an important role to play, especially within the EU. Indeed, with more than 500 million consumers, the European Union has the power to promote businesses globally and the nature of those businesses impacts people's life and their well-being. But the best way to understand the impact of sustainable and inclusive businesses is perhaps to hear from somebody running one. And to do so, we welcome Lone Poissonnier, Concord's Policy and Advocacy Coordinator, working on the subject of inequalities and sustainable economy, and Fatima Ihihi from the Cooperative Tudarte in Morocco. Fatima is a successful entrepreneur that empowered women in her community and brought them financial independence by producing argan oil. Fatima, welcome. We're honored to have you with us today in our Talking Development podcast. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for having me in your podcast. Let's start. Could you tell us what cooperative Tudert is and how it came to be? Tudert is a feminine agriculture cooperative, which is specializing on producing and commercialization of argan oil, amlu, honey, and other vegetable oils. The name Tudert means in Amazir language, the life. All started from my early childhood when I used to go to the, my village. I remarked that all this little girl working in fields instead of going to school because of the poverty. Later, when I grew up, I had this idea of creating a cooperative to help them, changing their life. In 2004, I started convincing some of the village women, which was very hard. We began with 29 women with hand crushing nuts, with no machine. Then in 2006, thanks to the government's aid, we bought extraction machines and we produced our first argan oil. What was your bigger vision when you were imagining Tudert? At the very beginning, how would you have described that, that vision for the future? In the beginning, I was imagined to dirt like a lifesaver of my village and all the region that would provide social, economical and intellectual help for women. A lot of companies these days are quite impacted by the COVID-19 crisis. 
Did the COVID-19 crisis also impact your cooperative? The current pandemic did really affect our production. Since we couldn't work at the cooperatives, we were obliged to work from home. And of course, that leaded of decreasing producing. At that time, it was essential to help women financially by offering food and money. So you really helped the women that were involved in the cooperative to stay afloat in times of crisis. Yeah. That's impressive. I was also wondering, Fatima, the women that are involved in your cooperative, who are they? The women working in our cooperative is from the different age and from the village in, of Imswan, the Duwar. They came from different ages, so we have 20 to 80. And for the women involved that have families or young children, what happens then when they come to the office? Can they bring their children or? Yeah, they enter and if they have uh, children, they can leave the children at the nursery. For the women involved in your cooperative, could you describe us what a normal day would look like? The women can come at 10 or 9 uh, a.m. at the morning. They can have uh, breakfast and then begin to brush in nuts. That's the importance of working at this cooperative. They spend all day in the cooperative from 9, 10 until 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. You're listening to Talking Development. Today, we're speaking with Fatima Ihihi, founder of Tudarte, about the power of sustainable and inclusive business models to rebuild our economy for people and the planet. I also was wondering how decisions are being taken, important decisions are being taken in your cooperative. Who has a say? Legally, the cooperative is a women cooperative, 100% marching in the administrative council consisting of six individuals. It also has an administrative and commercial director. Every year, a regular general assembly is held in which the members discuss all the results in the year. So the women involved in the cooperative all feel some ownership over those decisions then? Yeah. I think that's a very powerful example of inclusion. After the many years that you've been working at Tudert, could you tell us also a little bit more about how running this business impacted your community? Thanks God, this business had a great impact on our community. It helped women, it provides the economic and ecological independence of women. We can now notice them supporting their family, stopping dependent on their husband and becoming financially independent. Not only that, but we success changing a whole community mentality. Our cooperative is not only about making money, but it is mostly about helping women achieving their dreams. In addition of the cooperative contribute to the environment awareness, people are more aware of the importance of argan tree protection. They stop the cutting off and we start a new experience of planting argan tree to ensure the durability of the trees. By empowering these women, you actually show that could benefit communities more widely. I'm sure your organization might also have some challenges that it faces. What are the main challenges your cooperative faces these days? So at the beginning, the first challenge was how to convince women to work in the cooperative because our Moroccan tradition, women should only take care of their house and not work out. However, currently the big challenge is commercialization our product and then finally make a new market and making our organ product as a brand. <laughs> mm -hmm. And do you think the Moroccan government or donor or international organization could actually provide some support there? Yeah, the government of Morocco supports us from the beginning, from 2006, they support us. They give ads for buying machine and for the building. Yeah, they help us. Yeah. So also governments have a role to play in this. I have one last question, a closing one. If you could say one thing to listeners considering to buy your argan oil, what would it be? By using our argan oil, we help to improve the social status of Moroccan women. You help them caring of their family and encourage them to work to educate their children. Thank you, Fatima. Fatima Ihihi is the founder of the Cooperative Tudert. Her story clearly shows how sustainable and inclusive enterprises can rebuild a better economy for people and the planet by reducing inequalities, creating decent jobs, 
reaching out to people that are marginalized and contributing to the urgently needed ecological transition. There is no better time than the present as governments forge a path out of the COVID-19 crisis to amplify their potential. Are you interested in knowing more about this potential of sustainable and inclusive businesses worldwide? You can find our Mind Our Business report at concordeurope.org. The report examines how the EU can amplify their power through international cooperation, trade, investments or economic diplomacy. From the renewed partnership with Africa, the programming of EU funding in partner countries, to the Social Economy Summit and Action Plan, there are plenty of opportunities in 2021 to bring about real transformation. Let's seize them. Concord is the voice of more than 2,600 NGOs across Europe. To keep the conversation going, you can follow us on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram. You can obviously find this podcast on your favourite listening platforms and on our website, concordeurope.org. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and to share your ideas. We'd really like to hear from you.